Hey everyone, so we are in the last few days of what I'll say is like nice weather. It's been much warmer than normal this November, so I don't usually have this many kind of closing up the garden tasks left, um, but I think we have a few more days before it's like high of 30 degrees. So that means I need to get all of my plants stored, um, everything that needs to come inside, inside, and just get the garden closed up for the season. So today what I'm gonna do is get all of the plants that I'm planning to keep outside over winter that should hopefully come back next year into the greenhouse that I have set up on the back deck. So I've already moved all of the plants that were on the front deck where I am right now to the back. So it does feel a little bit empty. Maybe I'll give you a little look right now uh, before we head back there, but everything is over there. I just need to figure out in terms of which ones I think need the most insulation. I'm gonna put those closer to the house because it should be a little bit warmer, get everything set up in there, and then I think that's gonna be it for those plants until next spring when hopefully they come back. So let me show you what this front deck looks like with everything gone, and then we'll head to the back deck and get everything loaded up into the greenhouse. So this is how the deck looks right now. I do have some plants still growing. I have peas over there. I have uh, my little pots of cabbage and pansies, the alyssum. I'm gonna cut the zinnias down, have that bed which I'm gonna leave, but I've moved like the pots that had the tulips in them over. I moved some of my hydrangea pots over. This pot is empty, so I need to dump that out, but there is still some green, although I expect that to disappear in the next week. We are on the back deck now, so everything from here to here are plants I'm gonna overwinter, these two as well. This little section here is pots and grow bags that have dirt in them, but there's no plants, so they don't need to be overwintered. I think I might actually start filling up those beds this week just to get these empty and kind of cleaned out. Um, but looking at it, I mean, there's not as many as I think I had last year, or maybe there are, I'm just not putting them all in the greenhouse. And the greenhouse here, I also have another hydrangea that's gonna be stored in there. And I did already put the dahlia back there in the grow bag. Since the dahlia is in a grow bag, which is the thinnest kind of material container that I'm overwintering, it's gonna need the most insulation, so that's why I'm putting it in this back corner there. I just stepped inside for a second so the sun's not shining directly into my face, but my plan is um, kind of however thick the container is, like the thicker the container, um, the more insulation it provides naturally. So I'm gonna kind of put them in order uh, what I think needs the most to least, and then that's how I will load them into the greenhouse. Um, also, the size of the container will matter as well, so the really small ones are going to need more insulation compared to maybe a plant that's in a larger pot. So I'm going to get all that kind of organized, and then I'll show you everything and talk through what I'm putting in there. Then we'll put them all inside, and actually I don't know if I'm going to close it up today, because I think we still have like a couple of 60 degree days. I don't want to get too hot in there. I don't know if it'll get that warm. I mean, it is just a plastic greenhouse. I think last year it kind of seemed like it kept it like 10 degrees warmer than outside, but I don't know, we'll kind of see how it goes. So I'll get everything moved in there. Might not close up the greenhouse yet, but definitely closing it up before we get our temperature drop in a few days. Here's what I'm thinking and I actually changed my mind a little bit. So first I have these two miniature hydrangeas, which I got from the Grand Garden Show everyone got one in kind of their goodie bag. They're in really small pots because they're obviously tiny right now. I mean, I think these are six inch pots and I really do want them to live. Uh, so because of that, I think these are actually gonna go down to the garage and I'll just put them next to the five Dahlia grow bags that I have in there. Just because they are really small. If everything dies in here in the greenhouse, I'm hoping that these will live better in the garage. So those are going to the garage. Then the rest of the stuff, I've kind of, this is the order of the ones I think need the most protection because these are in terracotta pots, which are like pretty thin. Um, I don't even know if they're like completely solid all the way through. Um, so I'm going to put these in kind of first, um, like move some of my shadows out of the way. So the miniature knockout roses in first. Then I have my two blueberries, miniature blueberries that are in plastic pots, which are not very thick either. So that's why I'm gonna get those closer to the wall. Then I'm gonna put in my bulbs. 
so in these four pots and then my hydrangeas because my hydrangeas are in like the thickest walled ceramic containers oh and then you have my strawberries that i'm going to try to overwinter there in a metal pot so that is everything that needs to go inside so let's get it loaded up Here is everything in the greenhouse and I had just enough room. I mean, maybe I could get a few smaller pots in there, but I even had to stack the tulip pots on top of each other, which shouldn't be a problem because everything in them is still buried underneath the soil. So I have the dahlia back there, the two roses, my blueberries, tulips, strawberries, and my three hydrangeas. I think I'm gonna see if I can put in like some grow bags with soil here um, just for a bit more insulation. A few other things I wanted to mention but there's a lot of construction happening outside is uh, all the pots have been watered in the last day or two so all the soil is moist. You do want to make sure that you are keeping things not like water on a regular basis um, but you don't want them to completely dry out because that can obviously kill the plant. So what I do is I will go out on maybe like once a month and check if things need to be watered. I don't water if things are below freezing because then the water is just going to freeze on the plant and not really get absorbed. But as long as everything still feels damp, then I'm good. If something feels really dry, if I stick my fingers down, then I'll give it water. And I'm gonna have to do that just with a watering can that I fill up inside because obviously the hoses are gonna be turned off, which I still have to do that. Another point I wanted to mention is something I almost did incorrectly last year before I decided to actually look it up. And that was my thinking was with all the plants I was keeping outside last year that I would wanna put them in the sunniest part of the deck because that would give them some warmth and sunshine through the winter. Um, but one, when the plants are dormant, they don't need sun. And also if you do that, what could happen, especially on the deck where I feel like it warms up a lot more here than it does on the ground um, is it can kind of shock the plant because the plant can get warm and then frozen and warm and frozen as the sun kind of goes up and down and you don't want that to happen so you kind of want to keep everything as consistent as possible so the recommendation i read was to put things in the shadiest part possible which is what i did last year and that worked well for all of the plants so i'm going to grab some grow bags add a little bit more insulation and then i'll show you kind of the final look of everything in the greenhouse here are the grow bags I added. So two here, just kind of shove them in. I like the grow bags too because they are easier to kind of maneuver and fit into the spaces. And then I added just two over here to this side. So now this is what it's looking like in here. And yeah, flaps are gonna stay open for the next few days. Once I'm officially ready to kind of close everything up too, um, cushions are going inside and then I will move, once the couch here is covered, move it over in front. Again, just for a little bit more insulation, I have this tub here that is full of soil, kind of giving some insulation on the side and obviously the wall on the house insulated over here. So what we have left now, these pots, and grow bag, again, that are empty except for soil. Grow bags back there. My composter will stay out. So will the raised beds. Cushion will be inside, chair will be covered. And then the raspberry bush, I'm just going to leave outside. I might move it to the front deck. I haven't decided that for sure yet. So that's gonna be everything for this video, I think. Um, it wasn't a very long, 
task that I had to do, but it is nice to get something else kind of checked off my list in the next few days of things I have to do to get the garden all ready for winter. I will obviously keep you updated as far as how this goes. I'll also update you as I check on the plants throughout winter. Fingers crossed, this greenhouse does not blow away because last year I got to the point where I did fill the entire greenhouse and then it blew away and some plants inside of it broke. But that was a much taller greenhouse that had shelves in it. This is much lower to the ground and now that it's weighted down, I think we should be fine. But maybe those are gonna be my famous last words. Um, but we'll see, I'll keep you updated on how all of this goes. The hydrangeas are coming down to the garage and yeah, I think the next few videos is just gonna be even more the things I need to do to close up the garden, which is a bit sad, um, but I am ready for, you know, a nice winter break and then jumping right back into things next garden season. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.